would be uncivilized. The Pittsburgh Penguins broke through in that second period. They score both of the goals. Now they hold a two-goal lead at 3-1. We've played 40 minutes of game four here at a sold-out Capitol Center. And welcome back to Capitals Hockey on Home Team Sports. I'm Al Koken, and uh, it certainly has been an interesting game. Capitals have got the pace slowed, but the Penguins still with plenty of firepower. And in case you missed any of the scoring, let's run it down for you with our Hardy's game scoring summary. It was Mario Lemieux who got things started. His fifth of the playoffs, Recky and Murphy come up with the assist. That at 4.53. But Dino Cicerelli, who has been a hot man for the Capitals, picks up a power play goal at 8.25. That's also Dino's fifth of the playoffs. Pavanka and Hunter come up with the extra man assist. That's how it ended after one, but then the Penguins broke through at 9.30. Kevin Stevens off a beautiful setup from Lemieux. Barrasso also picks up an assist, goal number six of the postseason for Stevens. Then the prettiest passing play of the night, finished off by old-time Capitol nemesis Brian Trottier. He gets his first goal of the year. Larry Murphy and Yarmo Yager come up with the assist. That's where we stand right now a 3-1 Penguin lead after two periods of play. Now the Capitals are back here at the Capitol Center for game four on Tuesday night, and then they head on the road as we take a look at where the Capitals move to with Chevrolet. They go up to Pittsburgh for game five. That will come your way on Thursday night, a 7.30 start at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. That's on the road with the Capitals and Chevrolet. Happy now to welcome to our home team sports studios and our broadcast a man who I guarantee you you'll be hearing plenty of in the years to come wearing a Washington Capitals uniform. The number one pick of last year's draft and the pride of St. John's Newfoundland, John Slaney. Uh, first of all, let me get uh, the impressions of, uh, of a young offensive minded defenseman on that first, on that, uh, first two periods. Uh, I thought uh, I was, uh, I was different. I mean, it was the first time I've seen a, pl a playoff game and uh, I, uh, the pace is very quick. I can see that very much, and uh, I thought it was uh, it was uh, it was a battle end to ends. I mean, it's a uh, it's a two-way hockey, and uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, obviously, the Capitals don't miss uh, seeing Paul Coffey, but as a guy who certainly is known for uh, for your outstanding skating and passing and scoring abilities from the blue line, were you uh, kind of curious to see what uh, number 77 looked like up close? Yeah, it was uh, a couple of guys were making fun of me because uh, he he was my idol. I mean, when I was growing up in that, but. Uh, uh, Ole Coles that came over and said, "I hope you're not shedding some tears." But uh, no, I, I was, uh, I just want to see how it, how the game was played and uh, the playoff styles. And I mean, uh, when you get in the playoffs, I know from junior, it's, uh, it's a totally different story. And I guess pretty well when you come to pro, it's even uh, it was a, even a little bit tougher. But I mean, uh, I, uh, at the same thing, I, w I wasn't uh, mad or upset or anything. The coffee wasn't. I mean, uh, I just want to see the Capitals win. Is that an accurate description of your game, with your your skating and your offensive skills, really the key to your play? It is really. I mean, uh, I uh, it, when I was a kid, I always wanted the puck. I mean, I was always looking for it, and I always wanted to stick handle so much. And really, is I mean, I like to carry the puck. I mean, be the quarterback sometimes, and uh, set up the great plays, and just to put the puck in the net. I mean, uh, everybody says the biggest thing is put the puck in the net, and also, I mean, as a pointman, you got to look where you got to. As a pointman, you got to you got to help your uh, forwards to put the puck in the net. John got the game-winning goal of the World Junior Championships for Canada. What was that experience like? Uh, first of all, I mean, to play for your country was the, was the biggest, but I mean, uh, uh, last year, Dwayne Norris is also from Newfoundland. He scored a winning goal, and everybody said, uh, how'd you feel? And I mean, uh, from Dwayne's uh, point, I mean, after he scored, I asked him, he was, he was very happy in that. And when I did it and I realized what happened, I mean, I was, it was, I was on cloud nine. I mean, I just could not play the last five minutes of the game. And that's, that's something I always cherish for the rest of my life. It gave Canada a gold medal in the defeat of the USSR, and John Slaney's goal made it a 3-2 game with Canada winning the championship. And certainly all of Canada and Newfoundland proud of John Slaney, and I think in very, the near, very near future, we've got a lot of Washingtonians will also be proud. We look forward to seeing John Slaney in a Capitals uniform. We thank him for being with us now, and we'll return with more intermission activities here at the Capitol Center after this on Home Team Sports. guy steps on it. You better hold on. The 
Looks like Rusty's back in town. The Miller Genuine Draft Rusty Wallace stock car is tearing up tracks everywhere. I love your new kitchen. Who did it? Sears did it. All of it? Even the new windows in the patio door. And the fence around the patio. Yeah, they gave us a free estimate, their famous satisfaction guarantee, even the financing. Ah, oh, you two always know the best deals. Ah, uh, Sears is the best deal I've heard of tonight. <laughs> Sears Home Improvements, professionally installed, satisfaction guaranteed, or your money back. Sears Home Improvement Professionals, the most trusted name around the house. Monday nights at 6.30, tune in to Home Team Sports for the Washington Post Sports Talk, a weekly program featuring Washington Post sports columnists and guests, plus interviews with fans on the street about the hot topics in sports. Every Monday night at 6.30, it's the Washington Post Sports Talk. Chasing tradition since 1922, Home Team Sports presents the 66th running of the Virginia Gold Cup. Don't miss HTS's live coverage of the Virginia Gold Cup, Saturday, May 4th at 3.30 p.m. The Potomac International Regatta. Join us for the splendor of rowing on the beautiful Potomac for one of Great Britain's greatest sporting traditions. Enjoy the excitement of American collegiate crews and the English elites of Oxford and Cambridge. The Potomac International Regatta, Sunday, May 5th at 2.30 p.m. on Home Team Sports. Penguins scoring both goals in that second period and have a deserving 3-1 lead after 40 minutes of play. But still one period to go. And the Capitals here in the playoffs, Craig Lachlan, have played catch-up hockey. And as we rejoin you, I'm Jeff Rimmer, along with Craig Lachlan. Craig, the Capitals have got to uh, see some of that magic return here in the third, down by two, but uh, certainly not an insurmountable lead. It certainly isn't, Jeff. I think the Pittsburgh Penguins are doing a good job in the Capitals' defense. And Kelly Johansson, Aya Frady, and Hatcher haven't been able to wheel with the puck like they have been in game one and two. And I think they're really shutting them off. They think that's a key area for them. The Capitals can go in the dressing room. They know they've got time on the power play. Terry Murray probably going over a play that they want to start with to get that early goal at the start of the third to really set the tempo up. If they can get that goal quickly, it's sure going to change around that third period. Let's get a look at our home team sports Washington Capitals shot chart. The no goals on 11 shots. And they got 11 shots. Barrasso handling him very well, and he takes the initial shot, and he's a big guy, doesn't let you see a lot of the net. And when he does give a rebound, he seems to cover up very well. And for the Pittsburgh Penguins, they get their two goals as we're going to look at their shot chart here now. In fact, uh, they might have been outshot, but not on the board. No, they got eight good shots away. A couple in tight on them, but they got their two goals, and what they're known for is the initial rushes. They got both goals on the initial rush, and we picked this play up here with Tom Barrasso. Peter Angelo not in goal tonight. Barrasso's in. He's very good with the puck, and he hums one around the boards, and Dale Hunter for the Capitals trying to cut it off. It sneaks by him right onto number 66, Mario Lemustic. Now, the Capitals are caught. It's a three-on-one. They're trying to hustle back, and if we watch this play here, Recky's coming up. Mario gives, if we hold it here, Mario. Now Rod Langway's not sure. He's got his stick out here because Mario's used a head fake. He's looking back at Recky, but actually he's also seeing Stevens flying to the goal, and that holds up Langway a little bit, and then he uses that head fake and then slides one across the crease, and that's no goal. He's going to stop that type of play. It's a bang-bang play. Perfect pass by number 66, the magician, right on to Kevin Stevens. He's been the hot man for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Another rush up the ice. They turn it over. Here's their transition game. We roll it here. John Drew's trying to get the puck, working it with Kristen, but the Penguins turn it over, and they move the puck extremely quickly. Trache, he's the guy that's going to score, but he passes it up the ice to Troy Loney. They do a crisscross at the blue line. Kristen's trying to go get back. They drop it, and if we hold it here, 
If we hold it right here, Kristich tries to take his man, but misses the puck. No one's coming back to pick up Murphy, and Murphy walks down the slot. He has lots of time to make the play, but he passes it across. If we hold it right here, we've got Troy Loney being taken out in front by Ally Afraidy, and I think the pass is really going to Troy Loney, but what happens is the pass gets through and goes right onto Trottier's stick. He has Beaupre right out of the net. Wide open goal. He slams it in. So those two goals have given the Penguins the lead after 40 minutes of play. When we return, it'll be period number three on home team sports. The Caps are on the power play, and we'll have it for you on HTS. I heard Hardy's is now making deli, so I came to see if there's any competition. You have to have fresh ingredients. Slice the meat just so. It's a nice, big, juicy sandwich. Okay, a big roast beef with tomatoes, lettuce, and mayo in deli talk. I've got a beef with Tommy on the grass. Schmear them. Chicken fillet to go. Bird from Philly to schlep. To go. Schlep. Schlep. Turkey club to go. Big club walk. Let's taste. There's no better tasting sandwiches than real deli sandwiches. Only Hardy's. This Hardy's does good deli. These beautiful scenes are brought to you by Subaru to let you know that it's now spring value days at your Subaru dealer, where you can get a Subaru Legacy with air conditioning, AM FM stereo cassette, cruise control, and more at savings of over $2,200. Come to your Subaru dealer, because while some cars can handle this kind of weather, a Subaru is also built to handle this kind. Hurry in for great savings today during the Subaru spring value days. As cars get older, they may need higher and higher octane, or they can't perform like they used to. But there is a gasoline specially formulated to control this higher octane need while providing the highest level of engine cleanliness, the Texaco System 3. You get great performance in every octane grade. Still think all gasolines are the same? get there. It'll be great to see the guys again. I wonder if they'll all show. I just gotta get there. I'm trying to make my way back to the Brackendale River. Friends deserve the best. This is great. They all showed up. The crisp, clean taste of Canada's best beer, Labatt's Blue. What took you so long? Uh, I had a little car trouble. Between friends, it's true blue, Labatt's Blue. Sports coverage of Washington Capitals hockey is brought to you by Lobats Blue, the crisp, clean taste of Canada's favorite beer. Between friends, it's true blue, Lobats Blue. By your Washington area Toyota dealers. Toyota value, the best deal going. Teams are back on the ice. Let's rejoin Al Koken at ice level. Okay, thank you, Jeff. As Craig Lockham mentioned, the Capitals could do themselves a lot of good, really help themselves by scoring early. That means they won't have to open things up. But if it stays this way, they certainly are going to have to. And it'll be really important for Ally Afraidy to be involved. He didn't play a lot in that second period. And if you remember on that Kevin Stevens goal, the one that made it 3-1, Kevin Hatcher had been out there an eternity working the power play and then couldn't get back off the ice. And that was one of the reasons Pittsburgh was able to get that jump. So Ally Afraidy's health, and he came back on the ice, but he was limping I think is going to be very important particularly if the Capitals have to play catch up by two goals with about 10 minutes left to play. Let's return you now for the start of the third period to Jeff and Craig. And again it is the Pittsburgh Penguins playing a man short here. There's an interesting stat. The Caps have outscored Pittsburgh 6-1. And I think that's one good note about the Capitals. They really seem to come and rise to the occasion in third periods. They seem to have those extra legs under them that they can propel past the other team whose legs may be tired and weary. And I think that game in Pittsburgh, even though they lost 7-6, sure shows that they do have some firepower and can score some goals. Here's Hatcher driving it in deep off the board. Barrasso lets it go. Young trying to shovel it away from Cicerelli, who's bumped by Young. Hunter control, sends it to Johansson. Cross ice, one-timer by Hatcher and his wide. Cicerelli sends it back in front. And Pavaka's shot goes wide. Johansson on the right point. Sends it ahead for Pavaka. Back to Johansson. In deep to Hunter. To Hatcher, one-timer by Johansson and it's wide. Hunter picks it up behind the net. Sends it back to Hatcher on the left point. Wrist shot through traffic. Cicerelli goes to the corner for it. Cicerelli. Sends it in front, Barrasso to his knees, and he holds on. 
30 seconds left. The Capitals all around Barrasso, but they must solve the Pittsburgh goaltender back in the playoffs for the first time in this series. And there's the Capitals' Dino Cicerelli, who has Washington's only goal, and it was a power play effort. He's one of the key guys in the power play when Kevin Hatcher receives that one-time pass by Johansson. Cicerelli all over Barrasso in front, and he gets his own rebound right to Pavanka. Pavanka can't control it, and Roberts clears it into the corner, but Cicerelli not allowing Barrasso to come out on the play at the top. When it goes from Johansson to Hatcher, Cicerelli not allowing allowing Barrasso to come out and cut down the angle. Only change is on the blue line. Iafredi on for Johansson. On the right point, Hatcher remains on the left point. Comes to Iafredi. Sends it off the wall. Broken up by Larry Murphy. Poked off his stick. Hunter gets it to Pavaka. Pavaka on the half board. Walks in, feeds to Hunter in the corner. Dale Hunter now sends it cross ice to Hatcher. He flips it towards the net, blocked by Larry Murphy. Hatcher bumps with Lemieux, who makes the play and clears the neutral light. I afraid he for Cicerelli. Cicerelli to Pavanka, to Hatcher, and it gets taken away by Lemieux. Here's a two on one. Lead pass for Hillier. Hillier with Lemieux breaking to the net. Hillier sends it in front, and it's wide on the glove side. Comes all the way to Hunter with Cicerelli. Hunter crosses the line. Cicerelli darts for the net as Hunter turns. Hunter sends to the corner. Picked up by Trottier. Trottier down the left wing to center. Across the line. Let's one go. Beaupre makes the save and then holds on to the rebound. handling that long shot and then juggling it just a little bit. Trache, those old legs seem to keep going and it's a knuckler towards Beaupre. He watches it right into his glove and then it bounces up a little bit. Trache barreling in just in case it does bounce free. Langway and Johansson back there to knock him out of the way. But Beaupre, smart stop by holding the puck, not getting rid of it with Trache flying in there. 18 minutes, 13 seconds left to go here in regulation time as we're going to look at a two-on break for the Penguins. And Hillier more or less looking. He's not sure what, what he's going to do with it. He's looking for Bork, but more, more than Bork, he's looking for Lemieux. Lemieux was yelling for the puck all the way down the ice. Finally, he took a high shot trying to go high over the shoulder, but Beaupre just let it sail wide into the, into the far corner. Bouncing puck in front of Beaupre. Johansson. For Tippett down the left wing. Tippett dumps in. Half change on the go. Hunter to the bench. Berglund out for Hunter. As Trache takes the pass and then clears it into the Washington zone. Lawler there to cut it off. Lawler off the wall for Berglund. Goes to Tippett. Right on Borasso. Gloved and then sent right back down the ice. And all the way back behind the line. Lawler will touch it. And icing the call. 17.39. Left in regulation time. The Penguins buy a pair. What's inside Chevy Lumina? Room. Room, room. Room, room, room. The most six-passenger room in its class. Room. More people are winning with the heartbeat of America. Room. to the Capitol Center, trying to encourage the Caps on, a sellout crowd. And there's plenty of time left in this hockey game. And that important HTS stat, the Caps outscoring Pittsburgh 6-1 in third periods in the first two games of the series. And they'd like to cash in here. From the draw. Hope behind the Pittsburgh net. Pack works it off the wall to Lemieux. Lemieux sends it to center. Iafrady there. He dumps right back in. Sent off the wall. Christich turned around by Stevens. Puck comes free and cleared to center. Lemieux in front of his own bench. A lead pass for Stevens. Let's one go. Glove by Beaupre. Beaupre gives it to Christich. Leads the Capitals attack with a lead pass for Ridley. Ridley right back to Christich. 
Being chased there by Stanton. Christmas in front. Let's one go for Rasso. Underneath him makes the save and then gloves it as Wrigley went around the net and tried to stuff it in. And Mario Lemieux patting him on his back for three tremendous saves. He might have shook up his shoulder injury a little bit with all those diving maneuvers in front of the goal, but Kristic really using his strength to get around the defense when it gets redirected in front off pack. There's one good chance that Barrasso's still down looking for the puck. Ridley tries that wraparound off pack again and just sneaks in underneath the glove of Barrasso. to tell there, Jeff, because the puck got deflected up in the air by Pack, but it got deflected up in the air. The referee should have been on the line to call that if that went in. We pick it up again here. It goes off Pack's stick up in the air. Awfully close. Borasso. Very, very close to going over the line. And the crowd here getting a look at it on the tell screen. They don't think there's much of a decision to make. What do you think? Awfully close. We might have to get one more look at it. I don't know. It was on the line. Was it over? And remember, the puck must be fully over the line for it to be a goal. I thought it went up in the air right along the goal line, Jeff. On the near side, Hatcher lets it go to Cicerelli, backhanded in front, gloved ahead by Murphy to the point, and back out. Did Hatcher keep it in? No, it's a delayed offside. And this is Gordy Roberts sending Gillen away at center. Gillen with a burst of speed across the line, and a shot goes wide. Johansson tries to clear, ends up on the near side in the corner, picked up there by Kevin Hatcher. Hatcher sends it away. Murphy fails to glove it, slaps it off the wall. Hunter knocks it down, keeps it in the offensive zone, comes to the point. Here's Johansson, winds up, a shot wide through traffic. Cicerelli sends it back in front. Barrasso's down, the loose puck. Cicerelli to the point, Johansson to Hatcher. Hatcher lets it go, the net's empty, and he shot it wide. Cicerelli set, tries to send it back in front, has it in the corner to Johansson. Barrasso playing without a stick. Cicerelli to Hatcher at the right point. A drive wide. Comes to the left point to Johansson. Gloved by Larry Murphy. Barrasso's got his stick back. And the Penguins back to center as Mullen turns away from Johansson. Mullen loses his edge. Here's Stanton. Dumping it into the Washington zone. Hatcher back for the Capitals. Some anxious moments around Tom Barrasso once again. But the Capitals could not cash in. This is Loney. Sending it ahead for Trottier. Too far, broken up by Lawler. Mike Lawler on the wing for Alan May. May bumped right at the bench by Loney. Bork stood up by Berglund on the near side. Stanton, a hard hit by Alan May. Loney tied up by Lawler. Poked free, but it's Paul Stanton that has it in the corner. The give to Jennings, off the board. Worked out of the zone and down the ice. And it's Mike Lawler sending it to the line. Turned around there was Hillier. The Caps Lawler gives to Sabra. Streaking towards the net and to the corner now is Kelly Miller with Barrasso out of the net. He one hands it ahead for Phil Bork on the left wing. Gives to Lemieux at center. Lemieux loses the puck there to Ridley. Mike Ridley across the line. With a burst of speed, he'll try to get around Jennings. Sends it in front, Lemieux there to clear it. Off the boards and back to neutral ice. Backhanded by Iafredi in deep. The Capitals really turning up the pressure. Four checking on the defenseman. They're getting one guy in to take the man. The second man's picking up that loose puck. Cleared down deep into the Washington zone. This is Iafredi. Ahead for Christie. Slapped off the wall to center where Ridley beats to Miller. Miller crosses the line, puts the brakes on, fires a shot. It's glove, but Barrasso could not hold on. 
First pitch away from Lemieux. Comes in front, tries to tuck it in the short side. The Nets off its moorings, put back on by Koharski quickly. Play goes on as Lemieux feeds it off the wall and down the ice, deep into the capital zone. First back, Ally Afraidy, he'll touch it and icing the call. 13.47 left to go. The Caps close, but not good enough. 2-1. The nation's top three-year-old thoroughbreds begin their quest for glory with the 117th running of the Kentucky Derby, Saturday, May 4th. West Coast Santa Anita Derby champion Denard comes east to challenge millionaire Fly So Free and Bluegrass Stakes winner Strike the Goal. The Kentucky Derby, where the Triple Crown battle begins. See all the action at Pimlico Racecourse in Baltimore. Pimlico, where champions are made. Capitals turning up the heat and Tom Barrasso flopping around in the goal crease like a fish out of water. He doesn't, can't even get up to stand up. The puck keeps moving around. He's trying to make the stop. Goes out to the point and Hatcher gets a wicked shot away. The wide open net, but Erie sliding out. Might have got a piece of it. Barrasso again diving across the crease. He couldn't get up on his skates to get his balance. Bruce digs for the net. Barrasso turns it aside. Bruce in front for Johansson pinching and Cicerelli backhand one. Wide on the stick side. Hatcher sends it ahead, knocked down by Francis. The feed to Mullen. He loses it and Bruce sends it back in the Pittsburgh zone. This is Roberts taking it from Barrasso. Roberts waits. Cicerelli watches from in front. Larry Murphy away from Bruce. The feed to Gillen, broken up by Hunter. Dale Hunter now with Cicerelli straddling the line. Backhands it in. Francis tries to clear, but Cicerelli keeps it in for Washington. He's turned around on the play by Gordy Roberts. No penalty, and then it's shoveled ahead, but not out. Hatcher able to keep it in, but then it's cleared ahead and on the wing for Mullen. Mullen trying to get away from Johansson. Turned around by the Capitals defenseman. Hatcher picks it up. Johansson and Mullen behind the play get things going. Nothing develops, and then it's cleared by the Penguins off the wall. That was packed deep in the cap zone. Waller away from Lemieux to Hatcher, who takes a hit. Ahead for Pavanka, who takes it from Cicerelli. A shot and glove by Tom Barrasso with both Tippett and Pavanka awaiting the rebound. And the Capitals have now outshot Pittsburgh 22 to 21 but it is still the Penguins by a pair. Michael Pavanka with a good burst to speed up the neutral zone. His wingers trying to drive to the net, but the defensemen worked the play, allowing Barrasso to stop it. And a great defensive play at the other end of the rink by Kelly Johansson. Joey Mullen trying to use his double step. He tried to slow down and then speed up again to try to go around Johansson. They pump and grind in the corner, each of them throwing a punch. Kelly Johansson got quickly up and back into the play. Pavanka and Gillen to the right of Borasso. Gillen wins the draw. Recky dumps behind the net. Slapped ahead off the boards. Loney tied up by Leach. Comes to the point and out. I afraid he back for Washington. Gives to Langway. Up for Tippett. Beyond Tippett. Pack poked away there by Pavanka who throws it in front. Leach could not get a stick on it. Bork all over the Capitals winger. Bork had it poked off his stick. Now backhanded towards the net. Pavanka is dumped right in front of Koharski. The fans again on the referee to no avail. Lemieux knocks down the pass. Lemieux sends it to the corner. He and Sabrin get sticks up. Waller turned around by Loney. Hunter feeds cross ice. Stevens steps up and dumps it back in. Here's Mike Lawler. Lead pass beyond Hunter. Christen sends it rink wide. Lawler tries to get it by the defenseman Jennings. Back to neutralize Christen. Feeds it over top of the stick of Kelly Miller, who's bumped on the far boards by Hillier. Play goes right on. Jennings on the near side. Off the glass. Christen able to block that one. Has it on the feed from Kelly Miller, but it's Lemieux away for Pittsburgh. He dumps in deep. I afraid he. For Langway. Lead pass on the left wing. Ridley cross ice. 
beats to Kelly Miller, who dumps it in deep. Ridley away from the check. Kristen looks in front. He couldn't get his stick on it. Lemieux feeds it ahead, and it's for Recky down the right wing with Kevin Stevens, who takes the drop back. Stevens down the right wing. Around the net, tries to wrap around, but Ridley there to skate it away for Washington. Ridley away from Kevin Stevens to the line. Sends it ahead for Cicerelli. Backhanded by Murphy for Recky. Recky dumps it into the Washington zone. And the Penguins and Washington both change on the go. The type of D now the Penguins are using, the capital forwards, now know they can cut off the boards. They're not the fancy type of guys. They're going to be ringing it around the boards out of trouble, allowing the capital forwards to pinch in along the boards to keep the puck in. 10 minutes, 17 seconds left to go. And it's time for Miller. What's on tap? Coming up later tonight on Home Team Sports Game 3 of the Adams Division Final. Boston and Montreal. Tomorrow night, Home Team Sports presents an NHL doubleheader. Norris Division Final between St. Louis and Minnesota, followed immediately by the Smythe Division Final, matching with L.A. and Edmonton. If you're not watching the NHL playoffs on Home Team Sports, you don't know what you're missing. How about those Edmonton Oilers? Four straight overtime games. The last two of the Calgary series and the first two to gain the split in L.A. You know what I think that is, Jeff? I just think they've been there so often. They've got a lot of character players. You've got Messi. You've got Anderson. You've got Grant Fuhr. They've been in this situation before, and they seem to rise to the occasion. Come playoff time, even if they have a lousy year, come playoff time, they're a tough hockey team to beat. So how about having to play? Double overtime last night. The fourth overtime game in as many. Sent to center and cleared back in by Larry Murphy. Hatcher knocks it down, takes the puck, and feeds cross ice for Johansson. Kelly Johansson back to Hatcher at center. Hatcher flipping it high in the air and deep into the Penguin zone. Murphy hit hard by Drew. Mullen back for it. Backhands it off the wall. Caps keep it in. Hunter sends it to the net. Cicerelli in front for Rasso. Spread eagle and Cicerelli thrown up against the wall behind the net and he takes exception to that. All in front was Dino Cicerelli alone. He and Barrasso who makes the save and Cicerelli awaiting the rebound. And a great play by Dale Hunter and Dino Cicerelli can't control it to get a good whack at it. Barrasso makes a stop but then Roberts comes in, they clean him out, much the same as what happened in Pittsburgh the other night when Bork scored and he got decked by Lawler. Lawler ended up in the penalty box putting the Penguins on the power play, but a nice move here. Koharski not gonna make the penalty call because I think Dino Cicerelli was ready to dig underneath Barrasso, thinking the play might have been loose still and the puck loose. Then the defenseman came back and barreled in on Dino Cicerelli. You get the impression that Koharski's put his whistle away for this third period? It's in his sure left pocket. Like <laughs> Nine minutes, 43 seconds remaining in regulation time. Pittsburgh up by two. From the faceoff, Johansson one hands it to the corner. Allen May bump. Nice to get it behind the net for Berglund. Murphy all over him. Comes to the point, but not out. Now it's cleared off the wall by Loney, but dumped right back in by Hatcher. This is Robert. Veteran defenseman throws it ahead for Loney. A quick feed to Trache, who dumps to the open corner. Off the wall, Bork and Johansson bump. Alan May with the puck. May skates it back to the line and feeds to Berglund, who backhands right on Borasso. This is Pat. Off the wall, down deep into the capital zone. Waller. Stop. comes in front, now retreats with Loney chasing him off Berglund to neutralize and slap back in by Stanton. The Penguins now just sending one man in, the other two guys picking up the wingers, coming back, allowing the 2D to stand up and go back and retrieve the puck. Christus tied up along the far wall by Recky, who steals the puck and then works it off the boards to center. Team captain Rod Langway backhands right back in, it's gloved by Barrasso, he tees it up and then sends it off the boards to center. Lemieux, one-on-one on, one on Langway. Across the line, Kevin Stevens ahead on the left wing, and the offside call. Eight minutes and 14 seconds left in regulation time. 
The Penguins by a pair. How does Jeep celebrate 50 years of discovering America? By making it easier for you to do the same. Because after 50 years, there's still no better way to rediscover the place we call home. Jeff Rimmer along with Craig Lachlan and Al Koken back here on Home Team Sports, this third game of the Patrick Division Finals. A young fan dancing around, trying to get the Capitals going. A lead pass for Christich, who taps it ahead for Ridley with Miller. Ridley turns back, hands to Christich, top of the circle. On the half board, Christich tries to control the bouncing puck, loses it, and Lemieux taps it ahead to neutralize. This is Langway. Inside his own line, the give to Christich. For Aya Frady. Let's one go from the line as Ridley was dumped by Kevin Stevens, and it was quickly cleared back to center. Johansson dumps it back in. This is Jennings behind the Pittsburgh net. Big defenseman lumbers down the wing, sends it off the wall. Johansson there for the Washington Capitals. He gives to Hatcher. Hatcher to Ridley. Jennings stands him up. And Hatcher gives it to Johansson this time. On the wing for Drews. Beyond him, he races after it in the corner. Hillier there first. Throws it off the boards for Muller. Comes back to neutralize it. Hunter taps it back to Hatcher, who sends it back in. On the far board. Mullen slaps at it. Comes to Hatcher right at the red center line. Hatcher now crosses the line, lets one go, deflected up, and into the crowd. I think Bob Johnson's told the Penguins that we've got a three to one lead and they're just gonna hang back and wait for the Capitals to dump it in. They know they're gonna ring it around the boards. What you have to try to do is try to outnumber them. You know they're gonna send their defensemen and a forward over there. The Capitals have to send their defensemen along with their first two forwards, try to make it a three on two to allow the puck to be kept in play and throw it back around the boards. And that's one thing the Penguins have really worked on under Bob Johnson is their play in the last period of the game. He can quickly tell his team, I'm sure at the 10-minute mark, he would have told his team, guys, let's go into a 1-2-2. Two, two. They played all the game at a 2-1-2 two, two tempo, sending two guys in for checking. Now they're only sending in one. And again, if you're just joining us on Home Team Sports, the storyline as this game began, all-star defenseman Paul Coffey, who had four assists in game two, not with the team and has a broken jaw. The question is now, when can Coffey return? Also, Ulf Samuelson, injured with a broken hand, but still plays game one and two, retreated to the Pittsburgh dressing room after the second period, and is reportedly on his way to Sweden to visit with his ill father now, out with a broken hand. Here's a shot towards the net, both play able to get a piece of it, and they fail to backhand it in. This is Hatcher in the corner. Sends it off the boards to Cicerelli, down the right wing at center. Cicerelli dumps, as he was hit by a couple of the Penguins. Off on the far side. Stanton works it off the boards to center. Perry turned around by Cicerelli. Play goes right on. Perry now, looking for May. Stanton bumped by Allen May. Cicerelli sets up shot behind the net. The helmetless right winger for the Capitals now. Comes in front, turns. Throws it in front of the net for Lasso's down. Here comes a penalty. A delayed call. The Penguins touch it. And here's an interference penalty being called on the Penguins. A big, big power play for Washington. We'll have it when we return. 5.57 left. Recently, a well-known automotive research company conducted an initial quality survey. And three of the top ten most trouble-free cars were Toyotas. But in the interest of fairness, we'd like to show you which other cars made the top ten. And we don't mind at all, since the Toyota ranked highest. And some of the other cars you may have expected to see didn't even make the list. See your Toyota dealer today. For Toyota value, it's the best deal going. Dino 
Dino Cicerelli, one of the best capital players, when he gets a puck behind the goal, he's waiting for everybody to set up a pick. He's waiting for someone to sneak into the open so he can pass it to him. Alan May gets knocked down in front. He's being grabbed and thrown down. Then Cicerelli walks out. He sees he has some room, and he's being held all the way across this crease by Stanton, not allowing any chance at all for Alan May to get his stick on the ice. With that, the Caps on a big power play. They trail 3-1 as I Afraidy turns feeds cross ice to Johansson. Johansson pinching in deep, sends it around on the boards, cut off by Ridley. Mike Ridley on the wing to Miller in the corner, back to Ridley. Ridley gives to I Afraidy, a wrist shot through traffic. Barrasso has it and he holds on. Murphy and Cicerelli certainly not having a cup of tea in front of that goal. There's a lot of stick work going on. He's holding his stick, and Iafredi gets a good shot away. And he's really moving in front, Cicerelli. He's holding on to Murphy's stick. He's cross-checking him. Murphy's cross-checking him back, always around that goal, looking for that rebound. But the Pittsburgh Penguin defenseman, when they do have a capital in front like Daniel Cicerelli, they know to get a hold of his stick. That's why they some, you'll see them a lot of the time grabbing his stick, letting it go, because if you hold it too long, the referee's going to call you for a penalty. If you just grab it quickly and keep letting go of it, you're not you're going to get away with that in front of the goal there you see the capitals with a decided edge and shots on goal here in this third period they have yet to solve tom barrasso mike ridley picked up the goal in game two they could certainly use his scoring heroics here 5 37 left to go regulation time the penguins up by two three one with the caps on the power play and will be for the next minute 40. Face off to Barrasso's right. From the draw, in the corner now. Caps try to dig it free, and it's off Cicerelli's stick to the near side. I afraid he bumps his man along the board, pinching in. And again, the Caps force a face off. 129 left. Kelly Miller, one of the guys out there that has to do a lot of the hard work in the corners. He knows he's got to get the punt to guys like Ridley and Dino Cicerelli and back to the point. His hard work pays off, letting the point men get a lot of time to get a good shot on Barrasso. On Francis, and Mike Ridley set for this key faceoff. Roche does the honor. Ridley has it taken away, backhanded, and down the wing, and this is Gillen. And Ron Francis, they both head to the bench. Some fresh legs on for the Penguin. I Afraidy gives to Hatcher. Hatcher dumps it in and around on the board. Cicerelli tries to cut it off. Goes to Miller, to Ridley. Right back to Miller. Tap to Ridley, to the point. I Afraidy. I Afraidy to Ridley. Backhand into the corner where Miller is. Behind the net, Cicerelli sets up shot. Beats to the left point. Hatcher winds up with a shot. Loose puck in front. Cleared right back to the point, and Hatcher will go after it. Tipped away from him by Mario Lemieux, and the Caps will regroup and neutralize. 42 seconds left in the minor as Ridley sends it cross ice to Cicerelli. He tries to walk in, and he's thrown to the ice. No penalty. Oh, right in front of Don Koharski. And Cicerelli thrown to the ice by Lemieux. And now returns up ice as Langley feeds the Johansson pitching in on the right wing. Johansson sends it in front to Hunter. Cicerelli looking for the rebound. He's thrown to the ice and play has been whistled down. I don't know what Don Koharski thought of that one. And I don't want to sound like a homer, but boy, did the Penguins steal one there. They certainly did, Jeff. Their blatant penalty calls that the Capitals should have a five-on-three man advantage here. Dino Cicerelli working all night, continuous skating. Dino Cicerelli gets the puck in his skates, and I mean, he's mugged there. He's thrown to the ice, no penalty there, and the puck continues up the ice, and Randy Hillier all over Dale Hunter, along with Dino Cicerelli. Now Lemieux and Cicerelli. Cicerelli trying to get back in the, the play. His helmet again off. He gets mugged at the blue line, and Koharski just whistling, get in your bench, Mario. 
uh, there's going to be no penalties. I mean, he let two blatant calls go there. I'm sure Rod Langway, the captain, and Dale Hunter, the assistant captain, Kelly Miller, are going to have a few words to him before each faceoff. From the draw, play has been whistled down by linesman Sweet Knox, who picked up, I believe it was a penny thrown on the ice. And the fans a little irate with the call, but you don't like to see fans throw things on the ice. The players could be seriously hurt, and Sweet Knox whistle play down as a coin was thrown on the ice just inside the Pittsburgh blue line. Four minutes and 14 seconds left to go. In regulation time, Terry Murray's on the bench. He'd love a word with Don Koharski, and rightfully so. You can't believe what he saw. Neither can the shutout crowd, and I'm sure even the players on the Penguins side of things. Now the Penguins really taking their time lining up for this faceoff. First of all, they sent out a fifth guy. Then Francis has a little crack in his stick. I'm sure he just snapped it maybe before he took the face off. He went over to the bench to calm things down. He knows the pressure is on the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Caps really coming at, after them. Jennings works it off the wall. Francis tries to clear. Johansson keeps it in. Comes to Hatcher at the point, And his slap shot wide. Hunter in the corner. Speed. Cross ice beyond Kristen. Johansson with two seconds left in the penalty. Gives to Kristen. She turns away. Kristich to Johansson, back to Kristich, a wrist shot, glove by Barrasso, who gets the glove up on Hunter, and Koharski's going to warn him. Al Koken standing by at ice level. All right, thank you, Jeff. Let's update you now on what's going on in the Adams Division final between Boston and Montreal. This is game three. It's moved to the Montreal Forum tonight. And right now, the score that we reported before has remained the same as they have tightened up defensively. It is Boston 2-1. They got first period goals from Skrico and Bob Sweeney. Russ Courtnall scored for Montreal in the second period, his seventh of the playoffs. And right now, Andy Moog and Patrick Law have been tough. It stays 2-1. Let's go back up to Jeff and Craig. 9 to 2 the shots on goal here in this third period in the Washington Capitals favor. But they've not been able to solve the goaltending of Tom Barrasso at the top and middle of your screen. Coming on tonight, the first game in this series and he has been a key factor. See the time remaining in regulation time. And the Caps need a quick goal here. From the draw, Johansson sends it in front of the net. Works all the way to the far corner. Trache picks it up off the wall. Oh, he's hit hard by Lee. Murphy turned around by Pobanka. Trying to dig it free is Alan May. Looking now for Lee's backhands in front. And it's clear to the line and beyond the blue line. And now this is Hatcher stepping back inside the Washington zone. The BD Johansson on the wing for Leach beyond him. Leach along the wall, bump. Steven Leach comes away. Tapped off his stick to the point. Hatcher away from Loney. Hatcher now tries to walk in front, fires a shot. Barrasso got a piece of it with his right pass. Cleared high in the air and down into the Washington zone. This is Langway. Stepping up into the play, he's to center. Langway across the line. Langway bumped along the wall. Trache behind the net. Christich takes his stick from Roberts. No penalty called. High up Brady with a drive that goes wide. Christich is turned around by Trache, and again, no penalty. Here's I of Brady's shot. Goes off the pad of Barrasso, and play has been called. And I Frady is upset. Well, he's upset not only because of the penalty calls, but he's saying Barrasso hit that shot. Koharski saying it went directly off the side of the goal. And because of that, the faceoff's going to become outside of the blue line. Had Barrasso kicked it into the stands, the faceoff would have stayed inside. And he's sure he hit Barrasso on that hard drive from the point. But a lot of guys getting knocked over in front. We pick up the shot, and he's just taken as much as he can off that. Goes off his skate, hits the post, and goes up over the glass. So the faceoff should be inside. 
and Kristic decking guys behind the goal and then in front he's getting mugged by Trace. He gives him a cross check across the face, a punch, knocks him down, doesn't let him up. Koharski in a perfect position to call the penalty, but he doesn't. Don Koharski being shown here on the tell screen and on your home team sports television sets. Much to the disappointment here of the crowd, save for one penalty here in the third period, has put his whistle away. Here comes Pat, the center. Young defenseman flipping it high in the air, deep in the Washington zone. Picked up behind the net by Langway. Langway now. Swings it ahead, off the stick of Miller. Pack away from Kristich, the bouncing puck now controlled as he sends it right back in deep. Zaya Brady, loses to Lemieux with a backhand by Lemieux and Rob there by a great sprawling save by Don Beaupre, sent back in front again. This is Murphy, dumping behind the net. Teed up by Beaupre for Aya Brady. Penguins change on the fly. Caps will try to catch them here as Aya Brady from center dumps it in. Stopped by Borasso. John Bruce takes a hit along the far wall. Back come the Penguins down the left wing. Francis away from Hunter. Dumped in. This is John Bruce now for Washington. Francis bumps in. Hatcher around the net. Here's to Johansson. Backhanded to Hunter at center. With Cicerelli and Bruce to free them across the line. Bruce towards the net. And play's been called on the offside. Don Beaupre has been pulled for an extra attacker. 125 left, the Caps down by two. And Terry Murray pulling out all the stops here. He can't believe that one was called on a two-line pass. And it could have been a two-line pass, Jeff, or it also could have been that his man went out of the box too early before Beaupre got before 10 feet before the box. If a player jumps on before he gets there, then the faceoff's automatically at the spot where the puck was at the time the player jumped on the ice. So it could have been a two-line pass, or it could have been that Beaupre just was a little bit late coming to the bench. So the Capitals now with six attackers. They need two goals, as you see on our home team sports scoreboard, with 1.25 left in regulation time. It's been a scoreless third period. Stevens and Trottier giving the Penguins that 3-1 margin in the second, following up on the goals by Lemieux and Dino Cicerelli for Washington in the first. Cicerelli in the face-off circle, loses the draw to Mullen, flipped high and up over the boards into the Washington bench. Well, Bob Johnson, the Penguins coach, Craig, was criticized for not shortening his bench in game one. He has done just that here in game three. We have not seen much of the youngster, Yarmir Yeager, still on the Penguins bench. We're seeing the Penguins go primarily with their defensive stallers, save for the big guy, Lemieux. I think Roberts has been out here this whole, whole third period, Jeff. He hasn't hardly come off. He's mostly going with just four defensemen, changing it quickly. Beaupre again out of the net. One minute to go in regulation time. Caps with six attackers in the offensive zone. Off Cicerelli, backhanded to the corner. This is Lodi sending it away. Hatcher pinching in, able to keep it along the wall. Hunter is there. Pavaka tries to dig it free, and plays been whistled down as Bork takes a shot at Cicerelli in front of Barrasso, gloving the Capitals' right winger, but no penalty call. Forty-seven seconds left in regulation time. The Washington Capitals need two goals to force overtime. The series tied at one. The Penguins close to moving up by a game in this series. Timeout has been called, and the teams head off to their respective benches. Timeout. 
Washington. Well, certainly a big turnaround from game two, Jeff. The wide open fire bandwagon hockey. I mean, everybody was running and gunning in that game. A 7-6 overtime win for the Penguins tonight. They both teams settled down and played pretty well defensively. But I think those two odd man rushes in the second period, especially the one with Lemieux, the three on one, are things that the Penguins have really worked on all season long. It's that transition game. And when they don't, the Capitals didn't get the puck in the zone, you're in a lot of trouble because guys like Lemieux, Recky, and Stevens, they can wheel. And they're pretty good with the puck once they get it over the blue line. Tom Barrasso. Yes, those 26 saves, many of them of the key variety tonight. And very much a factor in the Penguins' 3-1 lead. Remember, we're right back here at the Capitol Center for Game 4 on Tuesday night. It's a 7.35 start. Tickets are available. You can call the operators right now at 202-432-0200. They're standing by to reserve your seats, and they're going quickly. If you cannot join us, we'll have it for you on Home Team Sport. Beginning with Al Koken's Capitals Report, live at 7 o'clock. The Capitals' net is empty. The Capitals with seven guys on the ice can now finally setting it up to John Bruce. He's just giving his team a little extra time to set up the play that they want to get it focused in their mind what they want to try to accomplish on this faceoff. From the draw, one cleanly by Gillen. In the corner, Miller sets it up for Cicerelli. Tapped away by Roberts. He sends it off the boards and down the ice. Kevin Hatcher for Washington. Gives to Johansson, almost overskates the puck, gets it back, feeds ahead for Ridley. Away from Loney, beats the Miller. Miller sends it behind the net. Moved along by Barrasso. Hunter looks in front, beats the Cicerelli in the corner instead. Right back to Hunter. Back to the point, and nobody there. 13 seconds left as it's backhanded by Johansson in deep. 10 seconds, the clock ticking as Barrasso sends it for right for the ice. Back toward is Hunter with four seconds. Three, two, it's touched, icing the call with two seconds remaining. And the Pittsburgh Penguins on their feet at the bench. And Tom Barrasso close to picking up the victory in the Penguin net. A lot of high-fiving going on down at the Pittsburgh bench right now. Penguins feel they've got this one all wrapped up. Entire Pittsburgh bench on their feet, congratulating one another. It's a veteran guy that came up with that big goal for the Penguins, Brian Trache. He hadn't been scoring a lot in the playoffs, but that big goal from Murphy really set the pace for the Penguins to take that 3-1 to one lead. And a big victory this is. Especially when you consider the absence of all-star defenseman Paul Coffey. Dylan and Pavanta from the draw. The horn goes. This game's over. Some extracurricular activity. As they're all piled up in front of Tom Borasso. Don't expect too much damage here. Borasso, an observer. The teams are separated. And the Penguins, well, they'll congratulate goaltender Tom Borasso as they take a 2-1 series lead. 3-1 the final score. Our post-game show ahead on Home Team Sport.